السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما نافعا آمين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts by the nur of Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq of learning his book and applying it in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Qur'an a source of tranquility, happiness and certain iman for us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his book the best guide for us and our families ameen ya rabbal alamin we are discussing about the greatest ayah of the quran which is ayatul kursi and till now we have completed uh the principles of aqaid from this blessed ayah we have understood the types of sifat attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to gain ma'rif of allah we said it is by understanding his attributes the types of types of attributes Uh, are based on a very important principle which is at tanzih and al ithbat or an nafyu wal ithbat negating the weaknesses deficiencies from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and affirming or attributing all perfection to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the only topic which remains is understanding the meanings of this ayah tafsir of ayatul kursi and for that i have selected a tafsir from the early tafsir which is tafsir of imam abu ja'far muhammad ibn jarir at-tabari jami' al-bayan عن تأويل آي القرآن إمام أبو جعفر الطبري رحمه الله is one of the greatest مفسرون of the Quran a mujtahid a great scholar of our ummah he was born in 224 after hijra and he died in 310 after hijra so he is a scholar of 3rd and 4th century after hijra now we are in the 15th century A, a very early scholar of tafsir imam at-tabari his book tafsir jami uh, the, his book of tafsir jami' al-bayan an ta'wil ayat al-quran is one of the best tafsir of the quran original sources it has been published in 26 volumes i have selected this tafsir to understand the meanings of ayat al-kursi and by doing that we will also taste the original scholarship the legacy which our great scholars have left behind for us till the last times and also appreciate the depth profundity uh, greatness of our scholarship this is one tafsir from the great tafsir which our scholars have compiled but this is the best tafsir in at tafsir bil ma'thur tafsir of the quran interpretation of the quran is broadly classified into two types at tafsir bil ma'thur and at tafsir bil ra'y tafsir by narration tafsir based on a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sayings of the sahaba and tabi'in this is the best form of tafsir because interpretation of the prophet will be the best interpretation of the quran of course because quran was revealed 
upon him. He knows Quran in the best way, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Sahaba and Tabi'een, the golden generation, who took their knowledge from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is called a tafsir bil ma'thur. Uh, bil ma'thur. Al ma'thur comes from athar, which is narrations. That's okay. So in this tafsir, we understand the ayah with the help of sayings of the Prophet ﷺ and sayings of the Sahaba and Tabi'i. We can extract uh, a lot of meanings based on that, but this is the primary method and the best form of tafsir. The second valid form of tafsir is a tafsir bi ra'i, tafsir by or a ra'i, opinion. You can give your opinion about the ayah after fulfilling the conditions of tafsir. You have the tools, necessary tools, like Arabic language and other ulum. You use these tools to extract the meanings. This is also valid, acceptable. Quran is a deep ocean. No one can reach its depths. New meanings will be revealed in every age and time. But the condition is it should be connected with the principles of Islam. So you cannot extract a meaning which goes against Islam or the agreed upon uh, concepts in Islam or it goes against the Prophet himself وسلم, or a Sahabi. You can add a new meaning which does not go against these foundations but rather appreciates or adds to the meaning. This is fine. All scholars in every age have tried to understand Quran uh, in a new way. This is permissible. This is a valid form of tafsir. Tafsir will be right. For this reason, the scholars of tafsir, they divide a tafsir bil right further into two types. They say a tafsir bil right al mahmud, tafsir by praiseworthy opinion. The opinion which is not only based on intellect or whims and desires or the cultural baggage. It is based on, you may not have a particular hadith to support your opinion, one hadith or a saying, but the opinion which you give is based on broader understanding of Quran and Sunnah. It does not go against Islam. This is a ra'yul mahmud, praiseworthy opinion. Then we have a ra'yul mazmum, a tafsir bil ra'yul mazmum, tafsir by rejected opinion. The opinion which goes against principles of Islam or the Prophet وسلم, or any other ayah, hadith, saying of the Sahabi. Okay, because you can claim that you have understood something new from an ayah, but you cannot claim to understand something which goes against interpretation of a Sahabi or, a, or the Prophet. Because in doing that, you're saying that I have understood Quran better than the Prophet or the Sahabi, which is rejected. So in both methods, we have a lot of tafasir written by scholars in every age and time. In a tafsir bil ma'athur, the best tafsir is tafsir of Imam al-Tabari. In this tafsir, he narrates the sayings of the Sahaba and Tabi'in with his own chains, with his own chains to them. And of course, when we say Sahaba and Tabi'in, we don't mean everyone from them. We mean the particular Sahaba who excelled in the sciences of the Quran. And they taught these sciences to their students. So from Tabi'in, we have selected people and from Sahaba also, like Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Ubay ibn Kaab, Abdullah bin Umar, these are great scholars of Quran. And um, their opinions were narrated by their students later on, who became famous. If you open Tafsir ibn Kathir, which is a famous Tafsir, uh, widely known between uh, common Muslims, which is, by the way, uh, a summary of Tafsir al-Tabari. Tafsir ibn Kathir is a concise summary of Tafsir al-Tabari. In that also, you can see these names, like uh, Qatada said, Tawus said, Suddi says. And who are these people? They are students of the Sahaba. Okay, So this is uh, a very early book of Tafsir published in 26 volumes, we will go to Ayatul Kursi and try to understand the meanings from this tafsir.
And in that, inshallah, we will try to uh, understand the method of the early scholars in tafsir of the Quran. Okay. Because Imam Jafar al-Tabari, rahimahullah, when he mentions the opinion and he supports it uh, by the sayings of the Sahaba and Tabi'een in particular, he also prioritizes between different opinions. And he mentions the soundest opinion according to his knowledge. Okay, so this is a great book written by a great scholar who is one of the uh, greatest experts in this field. Tafsir al-Tabari by Imam Abu Jafar ibn Jarir al-Tabari. He died in 310 after Hijrah. He, subhanallah, <laughs> more than uh, 12 centuries before. And we still benefit from this book. And nothing has been written which can compete with this work. And Muslims will benefit from this work till the last day. This is the legacy. This is how you benefit. Ilmun nafi'un, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Ilmun nafi'un yantafi'u bihi. An-nas. What you leave behind after you leave this dunya, you die. One of the best things is beneficial knowledge, which benefits people. So let's go to, uh, this is volume five, I think, uh, volume four, al juz al rabia This is the best edition. We will go to Ayatul Kursi. Okay. So of course, this is in Arabic. I will read and explain. And in that, let us appreciate the uh, depth, methodology, uh, greatness of these scholars. Okay, so let us make this full screen and then we read this. Imam At-Tabari, rahimahullah, he says, Al-Qawlu fi ta'wili qawli Allahi jalla thana'u, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. The interpretation of the ayah or the words of Allah, may his praise be exalted. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. This is his method. He mentions the meaning briefly and then he supports it by the sayings of Sahaba and Tabi. So he says the meaning is this. And these are the people who were of this opinion. Okay. And he uses Arabic language also, which is a very important method in understanding the Quran using Arabic language, particularly the poetry, the poetry of the early Arab poets in understanding the meaning of the words. And this method goes back to the famous uh, Sahabi and scholar of the Quran, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma. Abdullah bin Abbas is special because the Prophet sallallahu made a dua for him. Uh, he said, oh Allah grant Abdullah uh, understanding of the Quran. Allahumma faqtihu fi din Oh Allah, grant him understanding of religion. Wa'allimhu ta'wil And teach him interpretation of the Quran. For this reason, the interpretation of Abdullah bin Abbas, radiyallahu an, anhuma, is special. And you will not find any book of tafsir, at tafsir al-ma'thur at least, uh, without the mention of Abdullah bin, uh, Abdullah bin Abbas. So he takes first part of Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al and interprets it. He says, قَدْ دَلَّلْنَا فِيمَا مَضَى عَلَى تَأْوِيلِ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ Allah. We have explained the meanings or we have explained the interpretation of uh, the words of Allah, Allah. The Ayatul Kursi begins by Ismul Alam, the name of Allah, Allah. We have explained it before and we also explained it with details, the meanings of Allah. If you, if you remember the 10 linguistic meanings of Allah uh, in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of these sessions. 
Then he moves to the next part. He says, وَأَمَّا تَعْوِيلُ قَوْلِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ And as far as the interpretation of these words are concerned, then he gives the meaning. This is the meaning of these words. And then he supports it, his opinion with the sayings of the Sahaba and Tabi. He says, فَإِنَّ مَعْنَاهُ النَّهْيُ عَنْ أَنْ يُعْبَدَ شَيْءٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ الْحَيِّ الْقَيُّمُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ means the meaning is prohibition of worshipping anything other than Allah who is Al-Hay, everlasting, Al-Qayyum, sustaining. Al-Ladhi sifatuhu ma wasafa bihi nafsahu ta'ala dhikruhu fi hadhi al-ayah. Who is the one whose attributes are what he has explained himself. May his mention be exalted in this ayah. Okay, so... He is worthy of worship because of his attributes, which he has explained in the same ayah. Yaqul, Allah says, Allahu alladhi lahu ibadatul khalq. Allah is the one who deserves uh, worship or devotion of the creation or the creatures. Al-Hayyul Qayyum, who is everlasting, Al-Qayyum, and uh, sustaining. La ilaha siwa, there is no deity Accept him. La ma'buda siwa. There is no one worthy of worship except him. Yani, which means, fala ta'budu shay'an siwa al hayyil qayyum. Which means that you should not worship anyone or anything except al hayyil qayyum, except the everlasting and the sustaining. Al ladhi la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naw. Which uh, the, the, the everlasting and the sustaining, who neither sleeps nor does the drowsiness overcome him. So you should only worship him because he has these great attributes. We explained this before also. Who has the attributes which he has explained in this ayah. So because of these attributes of perfection and beauty, he is the only being worthy of worship. Then he says, وَهَذِي الْآيَةِ إِبَانَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ This ayah is a clear explanation or exposition from Allah, may his praise be exalted, for believers in him and his prophet. And this is a clear ibana, exposition, explanation of uh, ibadah and Allah being worthy of worship for those who believe in him. And those who believe in his messenger. عَمَّا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الْمُخْتَلِفِينَ الْبَيِّنَاتُ مِنْ بَعْدِ الرُّسُولِ الَّتِي أَخْبَرَنَا تَعَالَى ذِكْرُهُ أَنَّهُ فَضَّلَ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ It is a clear explanation to those who believe in Allah and his prophet about those who came before the last and final messenger and they fell into dispute regarding the religion. So Allah is explaining for the believers in a clear way the rights of Allah, who is Allah, his attributes. Why? Because of the disagreement and dispute which happened. The Christians who made uh, God Trinity, three gods, three in one. They uh, made a son of God. The Jews, they also declared Uzair son of God, as Quran is mentioned, and so on and so forth. So this is also the purpose. In Ayatul Kursi, the purpose is also to explain about Allah, to clear the picture of Allah for those who believe in him. fi the early nations, they were divided regarding it. And this dispute, it reached, uh, it, it reached fighting between them. They fought each other in disbelief. Okay, so to clear this confusion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained his attributes in Ayatul Kursi. وَإِيمَانًا and مِنْ بَعْضٍ And some of them, they believed and some of them, they, they, they disbelieved. فَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِلتَّصْدِيقِ بِهِ So, all praises are due to Allah who has guided us to the belief in it. 
to the belief in uh, in uh, his verses, in his signs, and in him. وَوَفَّقَنَا لِلْإِقْرَارِ بِهِ And who has guided us also and who has given us tawfiq to uh, accept and submit to him. Okay, so in this ayah is a clear explanation, exposition for the believers about Allah, about uh, the greatest form of knowledge, which is Allah and his attributes, so that we can base our iman on clear foundations. Because the previous nations, they were disputed, they, 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 they disputed about these matters between themselves, they distorted their books, and so on and so forth. That's why Imam At-Tabari, he says, all praises are due to Allah who guided us, who protected us, the last and final ummah, of the lost and final messenger. Okay, this is the general meaning. Here he gives the general meaning of La ilaha illahu. And now how, you see how carefully he has extracted some beautiful meanings of this kalima. Then he says, Wa amma qawluhu, I will not go into detailed explanation. Let's focus on the text and read it and taste the original scholarship. I will only Explain the difficult words. And as for the words of Allah, Al Hayyu. So, Allah la ilaha illa, huwa al Hayyu al Qayyum, al Hayyu. Fainahu yani al Ladi lahu al Hayatu al Daima. Al Hay means the one who has perpetual life. Wal Baka al Ladi la awwala lahu bi haddin. And uh, he has the Baka which does not have any beginning. So this perfect life or perpetual life or baqa existence does not have any beginning. And this existence or life does not have any end. It does not have any beginning bihad, by a limit. So before that, he did not exist and after that he existed. وَلَا آخِرَ لَهُ He does not have any end بِأَمَدٍ by the, by the end. Amad means something which exists for a certain period of time. After that, he will not exist. No, Allah is, his life is perpetual. Okay, He is awwal. He does not have any beginning and he is the akhir. He does not have any end. إِذْ كُلُّ مَا سِوَاهُ because everything other than Allah, فَإِنَّهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ حَيًّا Even if it is living, yani even if it has the same attribute, because Allah is high, Allah, uh, we are attributing life to Allah. Allah is, uh, that's why in the translation you will see everlasting. Otherwise, high means uh, someone who is alive. So we don't say Allah is alive, we say Allah is everlasting. Because this is the meaning of uh, haya when we refer to Allah. So everything which is other than Allah also is living. We are also living. Uh, animals and beings are also living. But فَلِحَيَاتِهِ أَوَّلٌ mahdud. But whatever is other than Allah, if it is living, its life has a beginning. وَآخِرٌ mamdud And uh, its life has an end. So, the life of uh, everything other than Allah has a beginning and end. Before that beginning, it did not exist. And after that end, it will cease to exist. This maut is the intrinsic quality of everything other than Allah. Everything other than Allah will perish eventually and die. It's only Allah who is everlasting. This life stops when it reaches its climax. And when it fulfills its purpose, it ceases to exist. Okay. So the difference between the life of Allah and the life of other than Allah is this meaning. Allah is everlasting. Allah does not have any beginning and Allah does not have any end. But other, whatever is other than Allah, it has a limit, a beginning, and an end. 
Okay, so he, now reflect on this. He has given a certain meaning to al-hay. He gives the meaning. He says, this is the meaning of al-hay. Then he supports his opinion by the sayings of the Sahaba and Tabi'i, the scholars of tafsir from Sahaba and Tabi'i. And that's why this is a tafsir bil -mafu. He says, وَبِمَا قُلْنَا فِي ذَلِكَ What we have said about that, and what we have said about al-haya or al-hay, its interpretation, قَالَ جَمَاعَةُ أَهْلِ التَّعْوِيلِ It is the opinion of a group from the people of interpretation, and from the scholars of the Qur'an. Then he narrates with his own chains the opinions of the early scholars. He says, ذِكْرُ مَنْ قَالَ ذَلِكَ the mention of those who are of that opinion. Okay, then he gives his chain. So this is at the same time a book of hadith also. A book of hadith is any book which contains connected chains to the Prophet or the Sahaba. Irrespective of its topic, it can be on about Quran, it can be about history, it can be about ethics, it can be about any topic, doesn't matter. If it contains the author of that book, if he is narrating a hadith, with connected chains to the Prophet or the Sahaba, it is a book of hadith as well. Then he says, حُدِّثْتُ عَنْ أَمَّارِ بْنِ الْحَسَنْ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا إِبْنُ أَبِي جَعْفَرْ عَنْ أَبِيهِ عَنِ الرَّبِيِّ قَوْلَهُ الْحَيُّ uh, Al-Rabi is one of the scholars from the early ulama. He narrates from him that he said, Al-Hay means Hayyun la yamut. Hayyun, live, la yamut which does not die. حدثني المثنى قال حدثنا إسحاق قال حدثنا ابن أبي جعفر عن أبيه from his father. This is the connected chain. مثله. The same opinion with a different chain. Then he points to the difference of opinion. See, he gives opinion, supports it with the opinion of the Sahaba with connected chain or tabi'i. Sometimes he has multiple narrations to support and in some ayat or uh, some uh, words of the Quran, he only has few narrations, doesn't matter. If there is difference of opinion between the Mufassirun, he mentions that. And he tries to prioritize also to reach the soundest opinion. For example, he says, The people of research have disagreed in the interpretation of that. Yani in the interpretation of al haya life, when we attribute it to Allah. Ahlul bahth are the ulama of Quran. فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ He says أَهْلُ الْبَحْثِ He did not say أَهْلُ uh, Quran or مُفَسِّرُون Because every scholar of Quran is not أَهْلُ الْبَحْثِ at the same time. Every scholar of Quran is not necessarily a very deep scholar who has reached a level where he can prioritize and he can judge the opinions. Okay. وَقَدْ اِخْتَلَفَ أَهْلُ الْبَحْثِ فِي تَعْوِيلِ This applies on all scholars. A scholar may be naqil only. The majority of the scholars in our times are naqil. They copy from the books. They read from the books, particularly uh, in non-Arabic speaking audiences. <coughs> those people who don't have reach to the original sources, what scholars do, they take from the books and they uh, translate it, explain it, make it easy for the public. This is Naqil. He's not a scholar. Naqil is narrating. Scholarship has its own conditions. The scholars have disagreed in the interpretation of Al-Haya. Some of them said, Allah has called himself Hayyan or Allah has attributed life to himself لصرفه الأمور مصارفها because from the meanings of life is taking care of the matters or giving matters their due, due rights وتقديره الأشياء مقاديرها and ordaining the things uh, Taqdeerul is ordaining the things. So, haya does not mean haya as we understand it, human beings. Haya for Allah means that Allah is taking care of the creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordaining uh, the best for the creation. Taqdeer. So, uh, taking care and then ordaining. 
He's not only taking care. He does not, he did not only create. He created, he's sustaining, taking care and ordaining. Who needs what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him that. According to his perfect knowledge and his perfect wisdom. So he is high with tadbir, which means he, he life attributing life to Allah means tadbir, sustaining, ordaining, taking care. La bi hayatin. It does not mean haya in the literal meaning, in the literal sense. This is the first group of scholars. They said life when attributed to Allah, hai, when we say Allah is high. It means, it does not mean life as we understand it. In a life, ruh, soul. Allah does not have a soul and a body. Life, uh, the, the breathing. Life, we need oxygen. So on and so forth. This is not the meaning of life. Yani Allah is breathing. Allah has a soul. Allah has a body. No, they say life basically means things which are necessitated by life. Okay, so someone who is alive, he has capability also to do things. Qudra. That's why when the body, soul comes out of the body, we say this is a dead body. We don't say he is alive because he still has the he, he still has the body parts in him. We don't say that because he has lost capability of movement. He's lost. He has lost qudra. He has lost speech. He has lost seeing. Uh, hearing on all these qualities. So, haya necessitates tadbir, taking care, sustaining, helping, uh, solving matters, and also ordaining things. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called, uh, used this word or this name for himself. This is one opinion. Others, they said, they said, uh, haya, when attributed to Allah, is a real attribute. It is attribute of Allah, like hearing, seeing, knowledge, qudra, and the attributes which we discussed about. So haya does not mean tadbir. Tadbir, this word here, means taking care of something, uh, ordaining, helping. Okay. So they said it does not mean tadbir. Haya is an actual attribute of Allah, subhanahu. There is a third group who said They said uh, Al-Hay is a name from the names of Allah It is not only a, an attribute uh, If you remember the principle which we mentioned many times during the sessions We said every name of Allah contains the attribute So when we say for example Al-Hay is the name it contains the attribute haya, life, everlasting life. But every attribute is not necessarily a name of Allah. This is the qaida. Every name contains an attribute, but every attribute is not necessarily a name. Why so? We will not go into that. It's a, uh, it's a, a mas'ala of aqidah. Okay, so they said, al hay is a name from the names of Allah, which Allah has taken for himself. We also attribute it to him in submission to his command. So we don't object to it. Because Allah has used this name, Allah has taken this name for himself, we also use this name. We don't tasliman, tasliman, yani submission. We submit. We don't question Allah. So how many opinions do we have about al hay? One, two, and three. The first opinion says, Haya does not mean haya in the literal sense. Life here means tadbir, taking care, ordaining the matters, which is the quality of Allah. The second opinion is hay is an attribute of Allah. Haya is an attribute. The third quality is it is an attribute as well as a name of Allah. So we can say al hay is the name of Allah. These are three opinions which Imam al Tabari has mentioned, and these are valid opinions because this is valid difference of opinion between uh, these scholars. Okay, you see how deep the early scholars go in understanding these matters, how they 
classify how they refer back to the uh, early scholars, Sahaba and Tabi'in, and how also they use their intellect in understanding the matters. And as we said, we can extract and learn the method of tafsir from Imam al-Tabari, but we cannot go deep into that. We don't have time for that. But for example here, why did the first group take this opinion? Why did they deviate the meaning of hai from the literal meaning? Because this word, if we take it in literal meaning, it does not make sense about Allah. If we say life means life, what is the meaning of life? And if something is alive, uh, means he, 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 this being needs life support to be alive. Okay, Life means breathing, having a soul in the body, so on and so forth. These are the meanings of life. But these meanings don't apply to Allah. So if the, these meanings don't apply to Allah, we don't know the essence of these attributes. We don't know the essence of uh, the being of Allah. So there should be a different meaning. Okay, And that meaning is this, which they have mentioned. So life, when we say Allah is al-hay, it means Allah is mudabbir. Allah is the creator and the sustainer. And sustaining means Allah, after creating, is taking care of the creation. Allah is ordaining maqadir. Allah is helping. Allah is giving. Allah is taking. These are the meanings of haya. But there are scholars who say, no, we should accept it as it is. The next word, al-qayyum, al-hayyu al-qayyum. Wa amma qawluhu, as for the words of Allah, al-qayyum, fa'innahu al-fa'i. Ulu min al qiyam. This qayyum is fa fa is fayulu min al qiyam. Qiyam means standing or establishing something. Qama means he stood. If I say I stood up, kumtu. You stood up, kumti. If we use for feminine gender, qiyam akum. I'm standing. Right. So it is on. The structure of fayul, and this is a very important point. Now, see, Imam al tabari is using language or grammar, involving grammar, to explain this word. So, Arabic language has great importance in explaining the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We know in Arabic grammar, the verb is very important in every every language. Nouns are easy to understand. Verbs are the main stuff, types of verbs. and under, Because verbs, they connote action. It is verbs we usually use most of the time. Okay, Because we are always active human beings, are active. So we use verbs mostly. Every language is about mastering the art of using the verbs. Al-fi'l. In Arabic, the basic fi'l, the basic verb is trilateral, which means three letters, which they show by fa a la okay fa ain and lam fa ala this is the basic verb in arabic this yani they, by fa ala they show the structure and there are other verbs based on it fa ala means to do something then we have for example da ra sa to study a ka la to eat. The ha ba going somewhere. Kha ra ja coming out. So on and so forth. Same style. So they by fa ala they mean the uh, the structure. Arabic verb, basic Arabic verb is tri latra latla. Yani the three letters. Fa a la. Remember this. And to these three letters in Arabic, we add more letters to change the meaning or to show different shades of <coughs> meaning. So, for example, if I say da ra sa means to study. 
But if I add ra, because dal, ra, and sin, da, ra, sa, means to study. If I add another ra to it, the meaning will change to teaching. So we say da ra sa, da ra sa, dal ra and sin, da ra sa to study, da ra sa to teach, because we have added another ra. So we don't show these two ra's; we just make sh shadda on it. Shadda means uh, the letter has been uh, written twice. We don't write it twice, but we just show it by Shadda. You know the Shadda, this one, yeah, this is Shadda here. Shadda. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is the principle in Arabic grammar. The basic verb is three letters. And then we add more letters to either change the shade of the meaning or to add new meanings. So he's saying Al-Qayyum is on the pattern of Fay'ul min Al-Qiyam. Wa asluhu Al-Qayyum. And in origin, this word is Al-Qayyum. Yani if we arrange Qayyum or Qiyam on the pattern of Fay'ul, it becomes Qayyum. But how did it become Qayyum? This wow here becomes Ya. He says, Sabaka Ayn Al-Fi'li. This wow here, which is the ayn of the verb, yani, the original structure. And they use this and they apply it to all verbs. So it is the middle letter. This wow is the middle letter. Because qaf, ya, sorry, qaf, alif, and meme, qama, is the original uh, verb. So wow is the middle letter, but before wow, you see this ya, which is vowelless. Sukun means vowelless. Vowels are three, fatha, kasra, and dhamma. So this ya is vowelless. When wow is preceded by ya, it changes into ya. This is how Arabs pronounce it. Yani, now, this is about how words are pronounced. Otherwise, it's Qayyum, but it changes into Qayyum because this one wow here, it was preceded by ya, which is sakin. This wow changes into ya. That's why he says, Fan fasarata ya an mushaddadatan. This wow uh, changed into, or it, it, uh, it we have uh, mixed it with ya. So we have two ya's now. It becomes Ya mushaddad. So this tashdeed shows we have two ya's. We don't write it. So wow changed into ya, and we have two ya's. And the end product, uh, what we have is al qayyumu, not al qayyumu, because this wow was removed. Why? Because both ya and wow are weak letters. Arab, and this is how Arabs do it. في كل واو with every واو كانت للفعل عينا which is the middle letter of the verb سبقتها ياء ساكنة and which is preceded by ياء ساكنة ياء vowelless okay so this is how Arabs do it if Arabs see واو in a verb which is middle letter of the verb and before that واو there is ياء which is ساكن which is vowelless they change that wow into ya and they remove it or they change it into ya and we have two ya's so this qayyum becomes al qayyum and this is a an ilm in itself this is a field of knowledge in itself understanding the construction of the words and how the arabs they change the letters they replace the letters this is an ilm in itself okay so you see subhanallah this is a book of tafsir and Imam al-Tabari is engaging language, he's engaging hadith, he will, he's engaging poetry, he will engage fiqh. This is the greatness of our scholars. So this was about the construction of Qayyum. And then he moves to the meaning. He says, وَمَعْنَا قَوْلِهِ الْقَيُّومُ The meaning of Al-Qayyum is Al-Qa'imu بِرِزْقِ مَا خَلَقَ وَحِفْذِهِ 
the one who sustains or who provides the provisions for those who he created and protects them. This is the meaning of Qayyum, sustainer. He sustains what he created by providing risk for it and also protecting it. Okay, this is the meaning. And he's not the God of Islam, who, who is the ultimate reality and God of all human beings. He's not like the God of Christianity, who created the, uh, or, or the God of Bible, who created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. Or not the God of the Greek philosophers, who, as Aristotle says in his metaphysics, he's the prime mover. He moved the universe and now this universe does not need him anymore. Like some atheists have called him, Naudhu Billah, blind watchmaker. This is a book written by an atheist. Blind watchmaker. He is a blind watchmaker who has constructed a very sophisticated mechanical clock which does not need the watchmaker anymore. No. Our God is active God. After creating, he did not retire. He is not a retired God. He created and he is sustaining. This is the meaning of Qayyum. Where does he take this meaning from? The one who sustains his creation by providing risk for it and protecting it. Where does he take it from? He quotes a couplet from, a, from an early uh, Arab poet. And in this, it doesn't matter whether this poetry comes from disbelievers or believers. doesn't matter. We use poetry from the Jahiliya times also, before Islam, to understand the meanings. So he says, like the poet Umayyah said, Lam sama wa shamsu ma'ha qamarun ya'umu. Qaddarahul muhaymin al qayyumu wal hashru wal jannatu wal jahimu. Illa li amrin sha'nuhu azimu. Okay, so he says, uh, this meaning has come in the couplet in which this poet, poet says, Lam sama nujumu, the heavens and the stars have not been created, shamsu and the sun, ma'aha qamarun ya'umu, and also the, the moon, except qaddarahu al muhayminu qayyumu, except that the dominant uh, qayyum, Allah, God, has ordained it. Wal hashru wal jannatu wal jahaymu, the last day, Jannah and Helfa, he has also ordained it, created it. All this has been created for a matter which is great. It has not been created abbas, without any purpose. So behind all this great creation, there is purpose, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to uh, fulfill. So he has connected the meaning of qayyum and qaddarahu in, in this couplet. So qayyum means the one who ordains, the one who creates, the one who creates, sustains, protects, and in his creation, sustaining protection, there is purpose. It is not Abbas. This is the meaning of Qayyum. You see how he engaged Arabic poetry in understanding the meaning of the word Qayyum. But this does not suffice. Because as a Muslim, we can say, well, uh, we need, because this is Quran, we are not studying poetry. We are not studying language per se. Yes, Quran is in Arabic. It helps. To understand uh, the words based on the language, but we need, uh, after all, this is a religious book. We need uh, explanation of the Prophet. We need from the Sahaba. Then he quotes that. He says, And what we have said about this word, Qayyum, the meaning, it is the opinion of Ahlul Ta'wil. It is the opinion of uh, the uh, Ahlul Tafsir, because Ta'wil means interpretation here. Ta'wil and Tafsir are synonyms. Tafsir, Ahlul Tafsir, the people of, uh, the scholars of Ta'wil, the scholars of the Quran. Dhikru man qala dhalik, the mention of those who said this, yani who have this opinion. And he quotes, he says, Haddathani Muhammad ibn Amrin qala haddathana, this is a short form of haddathana. Haddathana means he narrated to us. Haddathana Abu Asim, qala haddathana Isa, an, uh, uh, ibn Abi 
Najih and Mujahid. See, Mujahid is a student of Abdullah bin Abbas, radiyallahu anhu. Great scholar of tafsir. Fi qawli Allahi, he narrates with his connected chain to Mujahid, that Mujahid will explain Qayyum to mean he would say, Qal, al-qa'imu ala kulli shay, the one who is responsible for everything, or who sustains everything. حدثنا المثنى قال حدثنا إسحاق قال حدثنا ابن أبي جعفر عن أبيه عن الربيع. Again he quotes a different scholar. He says القيوم قيم على كل شيء. The one who is caretaker of everything. يكلأه ويرزقه. He creates it, provides risk for it, provides provisions for it, ويحفظه and protects it. حدثنا موسى ابن هارون قال حدثنا عمرو ابن حماد قال حدثنا أسبات عن السدي. Again, the Suddi is Mufassir from Tabi'een. These are all students of the Sahaba. Al-Qayyum huwa al-Qa'imu. Al-Qayyum is Qa'im. The one who in himself he is established. Because you cannot protect others if you don't have the power to protect. You cannot provide for others if you don't have risk with you. If you don't have power, if you don't have pot potential, if you don't have capability, you cannot do it for others. So Qayyum also means Qa'im, the one who is self-sufficient, the one who is powerful. That's why Allah can protect others and his creation, he can provide for others. Okay. حدثني المثنى قال حدثنا إسحاق قال حدثنا أبو زهير عن جويبر عن الضحاق الحي القيوم قال القائم الدائم. الضحاك he says الحي القيوم means القائم the one who is established self sufficient powerful الدائم perpetual. he does not have a beginning or any end. this is how Imam al Tabari explains and understands القيوم. then he says القول في تأويل قوله جل ثناو the Interpretation of the words of Allah, may His praise be exalted. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naw. Neither sleep nor drowsiness overcomes Allah. Ya'ni, ya'ni bi qawlihi jalla thana'uhu la ta'khuduhu sinatun. By this, by these words, la ta'khuduhu sinatun. Sina, drowsiness, does not overcome Allah. Allah means لا يأخذه نعاس فينعسى. نعاس means the beginning of sleep. It means Allah does not feel drowsy. ولا نوم. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى does not feel sleepy. فيستسقل نوما. Okay, so نعاس is the beginning and noun is فَيَسْتَثْقِلَ means it doesn't become heavy. Both drowsiness and sleep have been negating, negated from Allah. So neither the beginning nor the end. Because uh, nuas, as they say, is on the eyes. And sleep is in the heart. When this nuas becomes uh, heavy, it, be, it turns into sleep. So neither Allah does not, ne neither uh, nuas, neither uh, drowsiness or sleep, uh, neither drowsiness nor sleep overcomes Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explains these words by, again, poetry, Arabic. He says, وَالْوَسَنُ خُثُورَةُ النَّوْمِ Sina, sina, wasan, are from the same root. Wasan is خُثُورَةُ النَّوْمِ, the beginning of uh, uh, or the, the, he says, wasan is heavy sleep. Wal wasanu khuthura tun naumi. Because in the footnote, the muhakkik says, al khuthura naqidu riqqa. Wal murathika lun naum. And a heavy sleep. So maybe the opposite here. Naum is uh, light sleep, beginning of sleep. Sina is heavy, heavy sleep. Khuthura tun naum. Wa minhu qawla adi ibn riqa. And he explains it by. A couplet of Adi ibn Riqa, who is an early poet. He says, "Wasnanu aqsaduhu nuasu, farannaqat fi ainihi sinatun wa leesa binaihi." Yani the 
Noas came on uh, his eyes, but he did not sleep. So it means he was, this person was over, he, he became, he was not able to help, help it, yani, avoid it. This is the meaning. When we work for a long time, there's difference between feeling sleepy and sleeping uh, on your will. Sometimes we cannot help it. It overtakes us. This is the meaning of and it becomes heavy. This does not happen with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The proof of what we have said. Yani sinah or wasan means heavy sleep or sleep which overcomes a person. He's not able to help it. That this sleep is in the eyes of a human being. Its uh, proof is another couplet from Asha Maymur ibn Qais, yani famous poet from the Arabs. Uh, uh, these are different couplets, uh, sometimes praising someone, sometimes criticizing someone, and in a different context. They are not speaking about sleep per se, but from the couplets, we can understand the meaning of a particular word. And this is the, so you can read a poem about a topic which is not relevant. It's something you know, praising a woman or sometimes it's the meaning is very uh, weird. It does not, it is not according to the, to the Islamic uh, uh, manners because poetry of the people of Jahiliya, the poets of Jahiliya before Islam. But the students of knowledge, they have to study it, not to take manners from it, not to learn Aqidah from it, but to understand the usage of words and the meaning of words. So he, Basically, he's saying sina means heavy sleep or the sleep which, uh, which, which overcomes a person and he's not able to avoid it. This is the meaning of khuthuratun naw. And then he, to support his opinion, he quotes these couplets, Arabic poetry, uh, in order to explain the meaning of this word. يعني he says يعني إن ذهوبها من النوم ووصن النوم في عينها يقال منه وصن وصن فلان and in Arabic we say وصن فلان فهو يوصن وصنا وصنة وهو وصنان إذا كان كذلك when a person is feeling sleepy he is not able to avoid it we say وصن فلان that person is feeling sleepy we don't say نام فلان يعني we don't say that person has slept if we say نام فلان that person has slept. Uh, it means he's already in sleep. We say, wasina fulad. He's feeling sleepy so much that he's not able to avoid it. He, he is not able to, uh, to, to ignore it. This is the meaning of wasina. So wasina fulan for yawsanu. Wasina is past tense. Yawsanu is present and future tense. Sina is the masdar. Sina is the jirant. You see? So he is explaining the meaning of sinna, the word sinna. So according to him, sinna is the sleep which becomes heavy on a human being. And a person is not able to avoid it in spite of his capability. Okay, so, so the schedule we have of sleeping, we can avoid it sometimes. If I'm sleeping at 11 in the night and I have to finish some work, I can delay it. I can sleep at 12 or 1. This is in my will. But sinna, so this is now. I will say I have delayed my now tonight because I had some work. I cannot say I delayed sinna tonight because I had some work. Sinna cannot be delayed. This is the meaning. If sinna comes to me, I cannot delay it. It's not in my capability. It's not in my hands. This is the meaning which he wants to explain by this, by uh, Arabic language and using the poetry. And then he says, Dhikru man qala dhalik. Uh, the mention of those who are of this opinion from the scholars of tafsir. Again, he quotes with his chains. He says, Haddathana al Muthanna, Kala Haddathana Abdullah ibn Salih, Kala Haddathani Muawiyah ibn Salih, and Ali ibn Abi Talha, and Ibn Abbas. 
في connected chain to Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما قوله Ibn Abbas said لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم means قال السنة النعاس والنوم هو النوم سنة is the drowsiness which cannot be avoided نوم is the normal sleep which we know these are words of Abdullah bin Abbas رضي الله عنهما سبحان الله يعني how blessed are we as an ummah everything is preserved and this is the meaning of the ayah or the promise which Allah gave us as an ummah in the Quran إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ We have revealed this admonition, we have revealed this religion in the form of Quran, Sunnah, and it is we who will protect it. No nation has the teachings of their religious leaders preserved in such a way, with connected chains. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to smile, how many blessed teeth would appear? We have it preserved with connected chains. So this is our legacy. Haddathani Muhammad ibn Sa'ad in Qala, Haddathani Abi Qala, Haddathani Ammi. He narrates from his father and his father narrates from his uncle. See the legacy. Then he says, Qala Haddathani Abi. His uncle narrates from his father. An Abihi, from his father, yani from his grandfather. An ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. From Abdullah bin Abbas again radiallahu anhuma. La ta'akhudu sinatun as sinatun nu'asu. Sina is the nu'as. The drowsiness with his connected chain to Hassan. This is Imam Al Hassan Al Basri, Tabi'i, great Tabi'i. Fi qawlihi, la ta'akhuduhu sinatun. Sina means qala na'asatun. Sina means na'asa. Yani we are sitting, suddenly it overcomes. And I, I, don't, I don't know what is the appropriate word for it in English. Drowsiness is the best word they have. Na'asatun, na'asatun. And if we are trying to avoid it, but it overcomes us. Again, with connected chain to the haq. So sometimes it is directly from the Sahaba, Abdullah bin Abbas, and mostly it is from Tabi'in, their students. He says, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Neither uh, drowsiness nor sleep overcomes him. قال السنة الوسنة سنة is وسنة وهو دون النوم It is below sleep والنوم الاستثقال And نوم is heavy sleep. So the, in this he goes, he, 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 he takes the opposite meaning. So some scholars, they say sinna is the beginning of sleep, which is light, and naum is the heavy sleep. Okay? But there are scholars who say sinna is the heavy sleep and naum is the normal sleep, which we know. And they mean, they don't mean uh, we can, uh, we, are, we are awake when we are sleeping, like we are awake when we feel drowsy. We are feeling drowsiness, but we're still awake. We can wash our face and yeah, we come back to our senses. They don't mean that. What they mean is basically that now can be avoided. You want to sleep on a particular time, you can delay it. But sinna cannot be avoided. This is the meaning. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention drowsiness in sleep? One word would suffice. Yani. Sleep is sleep. Khalas. Why to mention drowsiness? The point is, Allah does not sleep. Allah does not have a schedule to sleep because he needs rest. Allah does not re need rest. Allah is not weak. It is human beings and creation who needs rest because we are weak. So the need for rest, Allah does is not, Allah is al-ghani. He does not, uh, need is not his intrinsic quality. Need is the intrinsic quality of human beings or the creation. We need food, we need rest, we need this, we need that, because we are weak. Allah does not need that. And so sleep, Allah does not have a schedule of sleeping. Allah does not need that. And sleep cannot overcome him. This is the meaning. So he does not need it and it cannot overcome him. So sometimes when uh, yani we work for long hours, we delay our sleep, but Finally, it overcomes us and we are not able to fight back. We have to sleep. We have to take rest. This, these are the deeper meanings in explaining the perfection of Allah, in understanding who Allah is, in understanding the fact or in connecting with Allah. When we lift our hands to Allah, these meanings should be in our mind. The power of Allah, the strength of Allah, the competence of Allah, the great wisdom and perfect knowledge of Allah. This is our Allah. So a believer whose iman belief is based on these great meanings, 
which are fruits of Iman, will never fall in, into despair, will never become hopeless from Allah, will never lose hope. Right? These are the meanings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not teaching us grammar here. We use grammar, hadith, fiqh, and all these ulum in order to reach the meaning. It is the meaning which we need. And then we apply it in our life. We apply it in our iman, in our heart, strengthening our belief, and practically in our life. Again, he quotes another uh, source, again from the haq. And in the haq, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not reading the chain. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوع السنة النعاس والنوم الاستثقال Again from him, sina is the drowsiness, sleep is the heavy sleep, استثقال means heavy. And from the haq, from a different chain, again the same meaning. Okay, so see, subhanallah, how precise he was, Imam al-Tawari. If same meaning from the same source has been mentioned with different chains, he, 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 he gives those chains. Uh, from Sudbi, and it's Sudbi, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم أما السنة فهو ريح النوم الذي يأخذ في الوجه فينعس الإنسان. So Imam Sudbi explained it in a better way. He says, Sina is the ريح النوم. It is the wind of the uh, sleep which الذي يأخذ في الوجه which touches the face or overcomes the face. Uh, that's why uh, a person feels drowsy. So sina is the rihun now. It is the beginning of the sleep which touches the face and it, a person feels sleepy. So all these sources as if they agree on the fact that sina is in the eyes, naum is in the heart. When the sleep is on the eyes, it is sina. When it transfers into the heart, it becomes naum in Arabic. We'll stop here, inshallah. We'll take more meanings and discussions in the next session. I think we have three sessions remaining, or two only. I think this was eight. We have two more sessions. Inshallah, we will read from Tafsir of Imam Al-Tabari, and I hope that you will enjoy. And it's engaging, no doubt. It's difficult. I'm trying to make it easy, because this is the peak in Islamic scholarship. Yani, I took you to the to, to, the, to mount our Everest, to the highest peak, which is tafsir of Imam al-Tabari. So there is no tafsir which is above this tafsir. This is the greatest tafsir from the great scholar. And by this, yani I, what I want to uh, achieve by this is also encouraging our students. It is not so difficult. It is not so difficult as it seems learning Arabic language, studying the original sources of Islam. If you are sincere, if you uh, give a serious effort, it is easy, it's not difficult. I hope, uh, I, I think I made it very really easy. Uh, of course, uh, I, I was reading and explaining, but it's not so difficult, particularly the works of the early scholars. If you give a serious effort and you seek help from Allah subhanahu, I hope that you will enjoy this, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding of his book. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate the ranks of these great scholars, Imam al-Tabari, and all scholars who nurtured Islamic scholarship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts by the nur of Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Quran a witness for us on the last day, not against us. As the Prophet said, Al-Quran uh, Quran is either a proof for you or against you. If you loved it, you studied it, recited it, uh, tried your best to understand it and apply it in your life, it will stand as a proof for your Iman on the last day. But as a Muslim, born in Muslim families, living in Muslim societies, knowing the importance of Quran, we ignored it. We did not recite it, read it, 
study it, understand it, apply it in our lives, it will stand as a hujjah proof against us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. May Allah make Quran a hujjah, a proof for our iman on the last day, not against us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his beautiful names and exalted attributes to cure our sick and to forgive all our dead. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabi al-ummi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.